Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, yesterday was the equinox, and um, a technic. Well, no, I hate the phrase technically. Um, some people call it the first day of spring. Some people call it officially the first day of spring, which is nonsense because climatically it's clearly halfway through the period as we move between winter and summer. Just by virtue of solstices and equinoxes, that must be. Anyway, um, I dispute that it is the first day of spring. I applaud that the fascinating fact about the equinox is that on the equinox we have 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. And it is the same everywhere in the world on that day. Now, if you knew that, you're not amazed. If you didn't, you are amazed now. Literally, and theoretically, even a, certainly on the equator, where it's always 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night, in the southern hemisphere, in the northern hemisphere, even theoretically on the pole, that's the day when it moves from being 12 hours of sunlight to 12 hours of moonlight, or 12 hours of darkness, I mean, I don't know. Anyway, um, it is 12 hours of daylight for every human on the same day. And I think that's very exciting. Um, I don't know why, I just do. And we have two of those every year and it was yesterday. Uh, now, firstly, Simon's done something very interesting. He's gone back into the Islands of Insight to play it on his own, but he did record the session and he's put it up on Patreon. So join us on Patreon if you want to follow along Simon playing the game for another couple of hours. Um, he, you can't keep him out of that world, basically. And uh, there it is on Patreon. Along with our super hard crossword solve, Simon's super hard solve of Emery Glue's brilliant puzzle, um, and all sorts of other content that comes up on there. We will have something new for you at the start of next month, I'm sure. Um, and that's Patreon. We've also got all of our apps, which include Killer Sudoku and Lion Sudoku. Um, couple of the rules we'll be featuring today, although very interesting variants on them. Um, what else we got going on? We've got, of course, Sven's Sudoku Pad, our merchandise. Check out the links under the video. They're always full of interest, I think. Now, this puzzle is by Suspicious Door. I think we once did a puzzle by Suspicious Door, I want to say nine months ago, something like that. Some time ago, anyway. But um, this one has a very interesting rule set. And I guess I've nothing to do now. I've babbled on about the equinox for too long other than go through the rule set now. So normal Sudoku rules apply. We'll be putting one to nine in every row, every column and every three by three box. Um, digits may not repeat within cages and must sum to the indicated value. However, for cages with value A stroke B, the digits sum to either value A or B. So in this case, the digits add up to either 9 or 21. The pink lines are extreme lines, meaning that each one must contain at least one, one or nine. That's a very odd rule, and it doesn't seem to make them very extreme lines necessarily to me, but there you go. That is the rule we get. Um, yeah, very interesting. Give it a try on the first link under the video. I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. What on earth? Almost all of the cages say 822, apart from some that say 921, and, and a couple in the central box that say 11. Right, well, a, a three-cell cage that says 8 has a 1 in it. A three-cell cage that says 22 has a 9 in it. So I suppose every one of those three cell cages, shall I color them for illustrative purposes? It might even benefit me. Look, they're all in one contiguous lump. And they're very symmetrical, rotationally at least. Okay, so those cages, oh, well they all have a one or a nine in, and so do these pink lines. Right, let's add up how many ones and nines that's putting into these areas. 
I'm going to color the pink lines as well because now I'm on a green coloring jag and we need an extreme digit in this case, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Now, there are eighteen extreme digits in the puzzle, two, nine ones and nine nines, but the cages that we've just looked at are, or sorry, the boxes in which we've been looking are only eight of the boxes. This cage will also have a one and a nine that won't be in green, or they won't be in this green highlighted area. So, so the, the cells I'm now going to highlight in a contrasting color, and I'm going to choose purple, do not have a one or a nine, and that is quite interesting in the event of them having a nine stroke 21 cage. Because that, without using an extreme digit, has to either be two, three, four, or six, seven, eight. Now these are clearly important facts for this puzzle. And having said that, I have no idea how they help solve it. So I'm just feeling my way through what's going on here. The way that the cages kind of cross box borders and the, the, the extreme lines as well, suggests it's probably going to be quite hard to pinpoint the ones and nines. Certainly, I don't think geometry is going to do it. But it's very interesting to learn that these corner cages are all either 2, 3, 4 or 6, 7, 8. Now, there's nothing immediately to stop two of them in the same um, dimension in those columns being both two three fours then two three four would go into that set of digits what is going to disambiguate this puzzle is going to have to be that 11 cage or maybe both of them but especially that one which is offset around the center I don't know how that's going to help but there's there's an awful lot of symmetry that's really only potentially resolved by those. There's even this new dimension of symmetry between high digits and low digits because apart from for these 11 cages we have no idea of the actual heights of these other cages. They could be using high digits or low digits. Okay let's think about what digits go into the eight cages. Either 1, 2, 5 or 1, 3, 4. And into 22 cages, we either have 985 or 976. Now, annoyingly, there is an overlap of the digit 5. I wonder if we're going to sort of have to color, but... Ah. Okay, remember I said in the purple cells, 1s and 9s don't go in those. Right, where's 9 in this row, in row 5? It's not in the purple cells, and it's not in the 11 cage, because you couldn't make up an 11 cage with a 9 in it, you'd need two ones. So 9 must be in one of these two cells. And therefore, whichever one it's in is definitely a 22 cage. Okay, I'm just for the sake of trying to understand what's going on in the puzzle, I'm going to guess it's over on the left side that there is a 9 there. And see what that makes happen, just in case I can work out how that helps us. Now, it means that these two cages... Well, they can't both be 22s, because you would need two more 9s. I don't know, I was wondering if we were going to run around the grid going, if that's got a 9, that's got a 1, that's got a 9, that's got a 1, etc. I don't really see what, what it does. Um, wow, what is going on in the puzzle? I don't think it's about 5s. 
but it might be. You do some thinking about five, see if you can work out what it is. What, how do we do this? The trouble is, I don't even know if it's this cell that's a nine. It could be that cell. Okay, let's say this is a high value cage. Is there another cage that now can't be high value? Like maybe one of these, if that's 985, no, this could still be 876. You'd have to put the 8 there and the 76 here. If this was 976, this couldn't be 876, but it doesn't have to be. It could be 234. Gosh, I'm really not getting this. Do I have to add up totals? I mean, I don't... I don't see how it can help. Um... Sorry, I'm obviously at a bit of a loss here. This has got... Well, no, it doesn't necessarily have a 9 in it, but one of these two does have a 9. And the nine is specifically here. I mean, I want to say that these must have a nine in somewhere, but it's not necessarily true. Maybe that really isn't important that nine is in either row five, column one, or row five, column nine. As it's virtually the only deduction I've made, I am literally going to pencil mark it um, across the boxes. I feel like it's something I need to cling on to. I haven't got a lot else going on in this puzzle. Um, oh, now, it's one thing we did work out, I didn't explicitly mention, I think it was probably fairly obvious. Each of these extreme lines only has one, one or nine on. The rule says they have to have at least one, but it is clearly at most one, otherwise we'd have too many ones and nines. Ah, right. Here's another deduction, and this is actually valid. The ones and nines that do fall in the green area that we've highlighted are eight of the ones and eight of the nines in the puzzle. So row one needs a one and a nine in. Well, this cage can only have one of them. And that, sorry, row one needs a one and a nine in, and they, that's a knowledge bomb. But they both have to be in the green area because, because for rows one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, the ones and nines must fall in the green area because they're, the, they're in the eight boxes we're, we're, we're thinking about. Anyway, only one one or nine can be in that cage, so this digit is a one or a nine. This is an extreme digit. Let's flash it dark blue. That's an extreme digit. So these two aren't. And then this has an extreme digit in it. The other extreme digit in this row must be in green and now must be there. And that's an extreme digit in this column. I don't know what I'm talking about next. But, okay, this four cell pattern, this repeats everywhere, doesn't it? So one extreme digit there, the other one is there. And we can do that here and here as well. And then what we just did for row two, where we again need two extreme digits, and one of them is in the straight cage, as it were. One of them is there in column two. So the other one is here. So that means we can identify these row two, column two, and its friends as having extreme digits in. So now we found some of the extreme digits, eight of them. There are only 16 to find. One of them is here. Can we, we can't, we could begin to color them against each other, but only on, in respect of these four. Mm, that is quite interesting. 
Because if this is a high cage, this is a low cage. Just need to connect this up a tiny bit more, but there aren't sort of new cages to, to check out. Still, we're doing something now. In row three, right, in row three and row four, two of the extreme digits are in those cells. One of them is there. The, oh, that's very weird. The fourth one, I feel like I'm going to come to a conclusion that the puzzle's broken in a second. The fourth extreme digit, I want to say that it has to be in one of those two cells. But if I come to a similar conclusion in rows six and seven, and they're exactly symmetrical, then it's going to prove that neither of these can be extreme, and I thought I had proved that there has to be a nine in one of them. So I'm beginning to wonder whether my whole universe is on shaky foundations here. Why, is what, why are the digits I've highlighted as definitely extreme wrong? Or are they? Oh my goodness, this is getting weird. Um, I counted these cages carefully. There were, there are 12 of them in the spiral. Then there's these four lines. That is 16 of the digits, one to nine, 16 extreme digits, one for each cage and extreme line. That's definitely right. So in these two rows, row three and four, that must account for three of the extreme digits. There can't be any there. There must be one here. And I just don't see how that's any different in rows six and seven. Have I extrapolated wrongly from thinking about two extreme digits in each box and thus determined that two extreme digits in the row must be in those cells? No, I haven't. I mean, it's genuinely right that the purple cells don't contain extreme digits. Okay, I'm really misunderstanding something now. One of these three is extreme. How's that? Oh. Wow. Well, that doesn't affect the case that I've been thinking about. Right. That one definitely said that there isn't one there, there is one there, and that's extreme. That one says there isn't one here, but there is one here, and that's extreme to be the second in the column. There is one there, so now there isn't in any of those cells, and that must be extreme. I mean, this, that is right. That is ex extremely right. Then there can't be in any of those cells. So. Actually, I could now make these other digits in these cages purple instead of green, just to understand them a bit better. In the cages where I have actually... Yeah. So let's go purple there. Those are not extreme digits. So where are we going to find the extreme digits for this puzzle? And I really want one of them to be... Or for these eight boxes, I want one of them to be in one of these cells. I wouldn't mind if both of them were in those cells, but that's not going to give me enough extreme digits in rows three and four. Oh, rows three and four can use those digits. Okay, sorry, I was so dense, I didn't think about that. These digits and these digits can use one of the, one of the extreme digits. Okay, so now I'm interested in polarity, I think, and working out a similar polar set. What I'd really like to prove is that that cage has the same polarity as that cage, 
I don't know how to do that, but I might. Okay, I'm going to use the, sorry about all the colouring and weirdness, but I'm going to use the pen tool and say that this green line says that this cage is either high or low. It's either an 8 or a 22 cage, but it's using one extreme digit that is seeing this cell down here. So this cage must be the other type. I shouldn't use a red line. I should use something different. Let's use a black line. And that's seeing this cell. So this cage is the first type again, the green type. And then this cage is the black type. Now, does that mean? Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. This could be 876 if that was 9, as long as this was 5. But equally, if that was... A low cage. This could be two, three, four. And there's no difficulty there at all. I mean, I guess what I discovered about these sets of three is that in at least one case, there is an extreme digit in one of these because we can't make those contain the extreme digit and those contain the extreme digit because we do need a nine in one of those cells. Oh my goodness, I'm really trying to grapple with what's going on here and not getting it much. So let's just sort of imagine this was 985, making 22 on the black here. This would be a 1. These would be from 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now, what else does that do? Does that do something to this? Not really. This. Oh. Um. Does this have to be different from this in terms of polarity? If this was 985, no, it doesn't. That could be 76 there and eight there. Oh my goodness, I really am not getting what's happening here. I mean, one can't be in that 11 cage. That's quite interesting, but I think that's for later. Um... Okay, I found some extreme digits, but I don't know which they are. That's the annoying thing. So this one, does it stop that being an extreme digit? Oh, well, in one of these cases, there is a nine in one of those. So let's imagine that's over this side now. Those two can't be extreme. The second extreme digit in box three would have to be there. So if that's an extreme digit, then that is one. Now, the next extreme digit in row three is going to have to be in one of those two. How's this going to work? Oh, and if that's a 9, there is an extreme digit in one of those as well. So there's one there. There's one there. There's one there. The fourth one is in one of these two places. Oh, can we trace them around? Say that was a 1, that's a 9, that's a 1. This, I don't know, it doesn't say what that is. Uh, 
I feel like I'm on the verge of a discovery. Maybe even that it's sort of been made and I can't work it out. I don't know that it's a disambiguated discovery, but I think it's something about where the where these where the rest of these extreme digits go, and I suspect it's going to be in those four cells. But what is the proof of that, guys? What is the proof of that, if there is any? I don't know. Um, so if that's a nine, that does have to be an extreme digit. Then, then that is going to make one of those extreme and one of these. Now, it doesn't stop this being extreme, does it? Because there could be a one in the 11 cage. That's my problem here. One of those two is extreme in box nine, that's definite. Oh, I see, and it's the black extreme digit here because we've had the green extreme digit there. So one of these is the black extreme digit and that sees that cell. Well, no, it doesn't see it, but one of these is the black extreme digit and so is that. So the black extreme digit, well, it could be there or it could be in one of these two. I think it's unlikely to be there, but it could certainly be there. Um, and that's not getting anything done. This could be green, because then these would be, say, two, three, four, five. If they were all the, sa all the same polarity, two, three, four, five, with one nine there, Ah, these would both be from 6, 7, 8. That wouldn't work. Okay, that wouldn't work because that would make both of these cages from 6, 7, 8, and you'd have four cells in the bottom row that were all from 6, 7, 8. So, I see. So this cage is not the same polarity as this cage for that reason. If those were the 2, 3, 4, 5, these would all be from 6, 7, 8, and you'd have a clashing problem down there. Okay, that's quite complicated to me, but that becomes black. And that same relationship applies in each of column two and eight, row two and eight. So up here, that becomes black. And then on the sides, that becomes green. And that becomes green. That is a symmetry thing. Okay. Right. I feel like that was something. Now. Now, what next? Can we do the same sort of thing again somewhere else? So, if this was green, feels like that. Would it have to be a different, if this was one, two, five, say it went one, two, five, that could be five, and that could be one, two. So, I can't rule that they're different makeup. Um, my goodness, is, is that learning that I achieved really not transferable at all? Ah, oh, yes it is. Look, this cell now sees a green extreme digit and a black one, so it's not extreme. Right, and that's going to apply here and here and here in symmetry, yes. So those are not extreme digits. So there is an extreme green digit in one of these, and this is therefore a green cage. Same is true up here, and then down the sides we have black cages. And now, surely this can't be black, because it would see... But these could all be the same. This could be nine... Yeah, they, it would see four of the either four different digits that are in black cages, and therefore that would be seven digits. Yeah, it would have seven of the same three digits in two columns if this was black, so that must be green. Gosh, this is complicated, okay. 
and this is green and the other corners are black because they're sitting next to these, sorry, these two green cages, that one and that one. And you can't have, you can't have that many black digits. Uh, that's not green, that's black, that's what I'm saying. There we go. Okay, so that is right. I've got all of those 822 and 921 cages allocated to black and green, although I don't know, yes, I now do know which is high and which is low because both of these cells that can contain nine are black. So blacks are the high digits. They are, this is a 22 cage and blacks are the highs. So anywhere I've got a black extreme digit, I can make it a nine. And I've actually placed something in the puzzle now. Hurrah. And then anywhere I've got a green extreme digit, I can make it a one. Right, and this cage is low, two, three, four, as is this one. And these ones and the other corners are six, seven, eight to make up their 21 without using an extreme digit, they're high. This is either eight, five, or seven, six, like that, and that, ah, oh, no, well, not necessarily those two, because only one of these is a nine. Okay, now, this is a one, because it's the only other place for an extreme digit here, so I can make this, uh, sorry, I can make this a, oh, I messed up what I'm trying to do. Oh, I can make it a green cell, and those two purple, actually. And then we're ending up with the green cells being the extreme ones. Okay, that's not bad. Down here, this is a one. A one, and its color goes purple. No, it doesn't. Its color stays green. It's these two that go purple. And this cage is low. I mean, I don't need these lines anymore, because I'm going to have ones and nines in all the cages. Oh, well. I'm just going to complete it for now. This is going to go black because it can't have a one in it now. It must have a nine. Surely we know where that nine's going to go. Not quite yet. It's in one of those two cells. Um, and this one's black. And the nine in it is on the left, on the right somewhere in one of those two. Now. These two are not extreme, therefore they can go purple. Um, six, seven, eight, one, nine, two, three, four, nine. These, there is a one here. This is one, two, three, four, five. I know that they're not repeat cages of each other because of that triple. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So these cells are five, six, seven, eight, and those two must add up to 13, as those two do as well. So they're high digits. Do I give them sort of black blobs? I probably do. This is just a matter of count. Uh, that's gonna be the same down here, and then in the other cells, these are low digits. Okay, how's that gonna help? Is it even right? It doesn't look right in terms of count. We've got three high, six, nine high. It is sort of right, but one has to bear in mind that, that black and green have an overlap in terms of the digit five. Oh gosh, okay, so right. It is sort of right, but not quite necessarily right. Okay, if that's a nine, that can't be a nine. So that would have to be a nine. And then over here, that would have to be a nine. So whichever way round it goes, these two corners are gonna become the nines. That, that must occur. So these cells here are no longer green, they're purple. And we've found that these corners are the extreme digits, or some of them. Now, we've still got a one to put in one of those cells and a one to put in one of those. In this row, we've got a one to put in the 11 cage, definitely now. Uh, 
Um, Two, three, four, nine, one. I don't know what to do next. Nine, one, six, seven, eight. I mean, I'm trying to do Sudoku and I just don't have enough going on to do it. Unless these 11 cages are more helpful than I'm realizing. I suppose what I could do is flavor the cages somehow. But I don't really know how to do that. If that's seven six, that has to be an eight, and that's a five. Then that's seven six. Oh, and would that end up being the five because it can't be the eight? That's interesting. So if that's seven six, that's eight. And this. I don't know. So in this top row, those are definitely a, a one, two, three, four, five combo. So that is six, seven, or eight. That's got to be right. In this row, that's not, necess that's not necessarily a six, seven, eight triple. But, yeah, I don't think I had the justification of colouring this one black. Isn't that weird? Let's get rid of that again and that. And the same here for these greens. Because they could be fives, and they they don't really have a colour. I I did have that justification in row one because I had five green digits there. Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. I'm sorry, I didn't really grasp that before. I think I'm getting there now. Again, I still haven't got. Well, I've got polarity sorted out, but not much else. But I don't need much more to finish this. Two, three, four, nine, one. We've got five, six, seven, and eight in those cells. Maybe that's a seven, six pair. In that case, that couldn't be a seven, six pair. But if it's a five, eight pair, that could still be a 5-8 pair as long as that was 8. So they don't have to be different. That's quite frustrating for me. I mean, I could fill in a 2-3-4-5 quad there and a 2-3-4-5 quad here. And a 5-6-7-8 in these. That one has to be 6-7 or 8. Oh, I see. 5 has to be in this cage. This is a 1-5-2 cage. Right, it's that simple, is it? It probably is. Same up here, the five in the row is in this cage, so that's a one, five, two cage. Now the five in the column, I don't think it's that obvious in the column. Yes, it is, because there's five black digits. It has to be in them. They're five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's in this cage, which is a five, eight, nine cage. Ah, oh, so that's a six, seven pair, and I get an eight here got a digit in the puzzle that's not one or nine. Right, I can do the same over here and I could have done the same. Uh, that's a five, eight, nine, triple. This is a six, seven pair, that's an eight. I could have done the same with the one, two, three, fours because two can't be there, two is there, two can't be there, two is there. So this is now not, okay, now I've got something going. This is not a one, two, five cage. This is a one, three, four cage. So is this one. Similarly, this is not a 985 cage because of the 8 we've planted at the bottom. This is 967 and so is this one. Okay, good. Um, 13429. Now, this is not 976 because it would break that cell. So this is 958 and that cell is 6 or 7. This one is not 134 for, because of that cell, it's 125. This digit is three or four because there's a f sorry because there's a two five pair in the box. There's a five eight pair in that box. So this one is six or seven, just like that. They are different. They do add up to thirteen together. This isn't three four. This is two five. That is three or four. That one is not two or five in its box. One three four. And again, this one can't be six seven. It's five eight. The symmetry is just powerful here. 
Now, is that going to tell me something about this 11 cage or maybe this? Yes, that's a 3 or 4. So now this 11 cage doesn't have 3 or 4 in it because that's a 3, 4 pair. It doesn't have 9 in it, we know that. It does have 1. So it has a pair that adds up to 10 that doesn't include 1, 3 or 4 and is therefore 1, 2, 8. There we go. And these cells are not 8s, they're 5 and 9. And these are a 6, 7 pair which is interesting. So in the box, we've got a six, seven pair. I don't know what to do with that. Can I do this 11 cage now? It's not eight, three or two, nine because of that cage. So it's either six, five or four, seven. That is a virtual six, seven pair with that. Nine is in one of those cells in the box and therefore not there. And that place is nine. The nine in that central row was on the left. This is now not a nine, this is five. We finish that cage. This really could ramify around the grid. I'm quite confident it will. And I mean, I hope not to get um, punched in the face as I try and prove that. Two and five, that becomes a two. Oh, it could, it could stop at that cage, which is uncertain but it ought to roll around the top a bit better. Eight, five, nine, two. Oh, I'm probably just missing something now. Five. These are from three, four, and eight by Sudoku in the box. That's a triple there. Oh, did that really stop? Or have I just missed? I'm sure I've missed, because I must be able to do the equivalent to these numberings over this side. Although maybe the side which had the nine in it, the side which didn't have the nine in the central row extreme cell was more helpful. Anyway, stop wittering about why you can't do it and just try and find what you can do, Mark. Two, eight. I mean, I could start coloring sixes and sevens against each other. I'm gonna do that actually next. Let's, let's just get rid of might as well get rid of all the lines and stuff and and blobs i just there's not much point having them in anymore they've they've done their job sorry i'm just tidying up here because it may help me see the rest of the puzzle i don't really need the colors either the purple and green we've we've sorted out apart from a pair of ones in the cages we've sorted out where all the ones and nines go in the cages so I'm just getting rid of all the lines, then I'm gonna get rid of all the colors, and then we're gonna think about what is better to, um, there we go, what is better to color. And I think the interesting thing to color at this point is maybe sixes and sevens. So if we make that red and that yellow, that's red, that's yellow, that one's red, that one's yellow, that one's red, that one's yellow. That red one is looking at that cell, which is yellow. We're going to kind of get them all colored now, or apart from in the central box. So there's a yellow one in one of those two cells. It isn't here. That was worth doing, at least a bit. That's yellow. The yellow in column seven is here. That's a six or seven. That's red. That's yellow. And we need a red O. Oh. A red in one of those two and a red in one of those two to finish off. Well, that was interesting. And we got another six, seven placed. Oh, I've got five there. There we go. Didn't spot how I could have carried on with the color, with the, with the numbering, which was working quite well, as I thought it might. Now I've got a one, five pair down the central column. We don't get one in the middle of the grid, which I thought was a racing certainty. Also, the one, five pair sees this cell. That's a four, and yellow is seven, and red is six, and we're making progress now. Um, now, this central column seems to be doing stuff. So we've got four, six, seven, and the one, five pair. Everything else is two, three, nine, or eight. Oh, one five pair is making that an eight. Sorry, there is more Sudoku. It's hard to spot everything. 
that you should be doing at the same time. But that's given me a 3-8 pair. This must be a 5 by Sudoku now. That's going to sort out 1-5 in those cages. I think almost all my cages are done now. I could colour 3s and 4s, but probably just filling in the numbers is going to be the way to do it. I've got a 369 triple in this central box. That can't be 3. These are from 234. That one can't be 4. And these ones from 2345. But we know, no, wrong, from 2346. That one can't be 4 or 6. That can't be an 8, or a 1 in the column. So that's 2, and that's finished the central cage. Now, that 8, no, the 2 stops that being a 2. That's less interesting. I mean, I'm sure that, oh, I haven't pencil marked this, 4 or 8. 6, 1, 8, 2, 7. OK, let's get rid of red and yellow colouring. Think. Let's, although it's remained for sixes there, let's do threes against fours. Or have we got any? I've got one four placed in the grid. And that's a two three pair, so that's not three. And it's not six, that's a nine. That's not nine. That was just the last nine to be put in. I didn't get it done, so I'm still going to be colouring threes against fours. I'm going to try it with. Purple and green. Purple, green. We reach across the grid to purple there. Green up there. Purple there. Green there. Then it gets a little uncertain. Oh, no, no. The box is helpful. Purple and green. And the box one does it. Green and purple. Now, is that going to disambiguate anything? Purple three or four could be in one of those two cells. Oh, that can't be three or four, because it sees both green and purple. Wow. OK, so now I can get rid of the red colouring. And that has become a three, and that's going to make all my greens into fours, all my purples into threes, and that is going to finish the puzzle. I've got a three in the corner there, proving its position and losing its religion as well. That is a two, that's a three, and there we go. What an extraordinary puzzle. So symmetrical, but such fun to get through. Really clever. I enjoyed that a lot. Maximum security, by suspicious door. Hope you had fun with that as well. Great fun for me. And we will see you again on the channel soon. Thank you very much for watching, and bye for now.